Okay, we have uh, looked, at least initially, at the uh, definition, I suppose, of, of architecture as requirements. And we have looked at uh, determining what our... Uh, what our requirements are uh, and therefore creating the architecture in that way. Um, hopefully defining the requirements uh, sufficiently clearly and with enough uh, uh, definition and detail so that the architecture gives us guidance as to how to achieve our purpose in, in providing those particular requirements. Now, uh, let us, well, uh, uh, let me give you an example. Um, sometimes we in, in technology and security uh, bears as much blame as any, any other field of technology. Um, we will uh, include technology simply for the, the sake of including the technology. And this is why the architecture can be so important. We need to uh, identify what is actually needed, what is actually required. And I give you as one example, um, situation, company, uh, and the chief technical officer had during his uh, university training, uh, really fallen in love with asymmetric encryption. And so he implemented asymmetric encryption in their product. The only problem was uh, the product had no uh, communications capability. It wasn't part of a networked system. Um, there was, in fact, no need for any kind of encryption, let alone asymmetric encryption, um, in this particular product. He liked it. He implemented it. He may have implemented it very well, but it was completely pointless. And, in fact, if you are uh, including extra code, you are increasing the attack surface... Uh, you may be introducing vulnerabilities and exploit possibilities uh, when there is no need to do so. Uh, so, you know, just adding things for the sake of adding things can be a security weakness, a security flaw. So, um, let us look then at the, the same idea uh, from in a sense, the other side. Um, when we implement tools, what is the requirement that we are addressing with regard to these tools? And as an example, I give you the old, uh, uh, well, I don't know, sort of a joke, of why do we have brakes in cars? Uh... The reason we have brakes in cars, rather paradoxically, but quite truthfully, is so that the cars can go fast. Uh, nobody needs to implement brakes on a sailboat. Sailboats don't go all that fast, for one thing, and boats in general, uh, you don't have to worry about uh, slowing them down. You have to worry about putting a lot of energy into making them move at all. Uh, well, I mean, yes, uh, boats are a very efficient means of, of moving cargo, um, uh, but uh, you, you do have to put a lot of energy into driving them, particularly at speed. So, uh, we don't need that, but we need, uh, you know, boats always going to slow down. Um, cars are not always going to slow down. They are 
built to reduce drag, to uh, reduce the the rolling f friction with regard to the wheels. Um, they are going to take a long time once you get them up to speed. So, in order to be safe, in order to have, uh, you know, to safely operate a vehicle that uh, is potentially going to travel very fast, you've got to have brakes. So the, uh, but the, the point here is there is a, there is a reason. It may not be immediately obvious, and we may have to uh, consider it, do a little bit of analysis uh, in order to find out why we have uh, this particular security tool implemented in our systems, in our enterprise, but we have to have a reason. We, we need a reason for it. Um, just to, to continue a little bit further, uh, why do we have brakes on horse carts? Uh, now, think about that. Horse carts are not necessarily going to go very fast. Uh, yes, uh, very often uh, you will set the brake on a cart uh, when it's standing still, uh, but there are other ways that you could uh, achieve that same end. The reason we have brakes on horse carts is so we can go downhill. Because when you start traveling downhill with a cart, the cart may start traveling faster than the horse. In order to keep your horse safe, you'd better have brakes. And you would better be applying the brakes uh, before you get to the crest of the hill. Uh, so, uh, anyways, the, the reason, the, the requirement, the need that is being addressed. There, there needs to be a need before we decide to implement something. And we need to know what that requirement is. And we need to have an architecture to guide us in terms of those decisions. What is it that uh, this tool will do for us? Why do we need that uh, particular function? And again, that also determines the, the type of tool, um, a number of the parameters we might associate with the tool, we need that guidance, and that's what architecture is. It provides us with the guidance for deciding on and implementing the various tools in regard to the various aspects of security that we build into our systems.